just going to hit record here and it looks like so it looks like we are up on my end can you see that we're recording on your end we're good to go uh yes all right here we go Welcome to the Wavel Star Show. I'm your host, the First Nation Sensation Wavel Star, coming to you with another edition of the show. And today I have a very, very special guest. I have Canadian Senator Patrick Brazo. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing very well. How about uh, how about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Thank God we were able to connect this evening. I know that we've been trying to connect. We've been having some technical issues, but hey, at least we were able to uh, to get here tonight. Hey second time's a charm yes yes for sure so uh right off the bat i guess uh i kind of wanted to explain uh where i came to know you from so we've got a common friend by the name of devin nicholson uh he runs a youtube channel called uh the hannibal tv which is one of the most popular youtube wrestling channels uh out there right now and he is also a, a wrestling promoter and uh, so I keep up with him because he's one of the Calgary guys. We both did our training uh, at Stu Hart's Dungeon in Calgary. And I saw that he was running a show. And uh, next thing I saw was a promo that Senator Patrick Brazo was going to be appearing on the show. And I was like, what? How did this happen? So I, I guess uh, before we get started into other stuff, I'd like to start talking uh, about pro wrestling. So uh, how did your interest in pro wrestling come about? Well, actually, it became at a, a very young age because um, uh, where I was living in uh, Manawaki, Quebec, uh, once in a while, we'd have, uh, you know, a show, a wrestling show once a year or once every two years. And I remember uh, I was staying at my uh, my grandmother's um, uh, store at, at one point and there was a wrestling show, but I was I was pretty young, so I wasn't able to attend. Uh, but uh uh, Andre the Giant uh, came in, uh, came in to to buy some uh, some some beer actually. Yeah. And uh, you know you know about uh, you know how much of a Nikon he is, and uh, obviously a very tall man. And I you know I was very young, so he was uh, he was just uh, grandiose to me. And uh, you know I say you know obviously I started watching wrestling when uh, it started airing on TV uh, in the province of Quebec, and so uh, you know I I grew up uh, watching the Rougeos and. You know, obviously Hulk Hogan, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dynamite Kid, and, you know, Davey Boy Smith and right. the Hearts and, and, and whatnot. But uh, I've always been a fan. And when uh, Devin uh, once approached me, uh, you know, when I was having professional and uh, personal problems, asked me to do the show. I, you know, I, I was having so many problems at, at that point in time that, you know, I was just, you know, uh, everything that I did in my life, whether it was sports or work or whatnot, is always trying to fit in somewhere. And so, uh, you know, even though I was having problems, I said, you know, what, what do I have to lose? Why not? And, uh, you know, so I shaved something off my bucket list. Yeah, man. Well, I tell you what, there's always room for you. You fit in really good with us. Feel free to stick around because I thought that that was incredible because uh, not only uh, it's, it's not just the fact that you're interested in wrestling, but of course that you've got uh, a lot of people know who you are. So uh, there was a lot of drawing power. And, and when we saw that, uh, honestly, I used to do interviews for uh, Mervyn Brass. He's currently the uh, producer for CBC North. And uh, I sent him a screenshot of what was going on up there and i said we need to get out there we should try and get on this somehow uh because th this is gonna blow up it was gonna be awesome and uh we, we weren't able to make it down there to see the actual show but i saw the highlights from the clip and uh the the part that i saw was uh you going through a table and right away, I was like, wow, that's something else. Because, you know, a lot of people get involved with wrestling and make special appearances here and there because, you know, they have some celebrity. Uh, people know who they are. But, you know, not a lot of people are willing to really just like really get right into it and do that. And there was an immediate level of respect um, right away when I saw that because um, I know what it's like to go out there and do that. And it's not um, it, like to, to give yourself 
to, 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 to fully give it. Cause you know, what's happening. You fully give yourself to somebody to let them do that. And you're trusting them. And uh, that's almost like uh, right there that you understand really how much the, the trust is and how much the brotherhood is uh, in the wrestling business. So I immediately had this newfound respect for you. Not that I didn't respect you before, but um, because of the, the wrestling connection and because I saw what you do, um, I thought, I thought this is very, very impressive. And, and then of course, because of the friendship with Devin, uh, knowing that you were uh, connected and, and wrestling through him, I, I thought, wow, this is great. So I reached out to Devin and uh, he was the one that actually was uh, connected me to, uh, to speak with you. Cause I told him I had an interest in, in reaching out. Um, obviously because I, I, everybody knows who you are uh, given your, your position and your, and your career. Um, but I also uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more because I saw the the interest in in the wrestling. And as time went on, uh, as time went on, and especially in these recent years, I saw a lot of uh, similarity, especially in the sense of um, of, of of that healing energy. Because uh, myself, I'm going through a little bit of a of a healing journey as well, and it had to do with uh, losing my father. And uh, some of that had some uh, some problems in there, some personal problems that I had to navigate through as well. And uh, definitely. Definitely had that point where you know things weren't going so great for me and really had to put my foot down and say I'm changing things uh, and and eventually you get some momentum and you start feeling better and then you start to really carry this healing energy and uh, I could recognize that uh, in you when I when I had seen you speak so I thought for sure now is a great time uh, to approach you and uh, to talk a, a little bit about that. So if you don't mind, uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about your story? I guess you mentioned that you were at a point um, where uh, you, you kind of felt like um, your personal life and your professional life maybe were spiraling, spiraling a little out of control. Um, can, can, tell us a little bit uh, about the journey. As, as much as you want to share, uh, feel free, feel comfortable. I'd, I'd be very, very interested to hear. Well, sure. But uh, first off, uh, I'm glad that uh, you you actually uh, had the strength to put your foot down and and change some of the things that you needed to to get back on the right track, because uh, having been there, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, it's an ongoing battle, but, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're made strong. And so, uh, you know, as Indigenous peoples, we just have to to try and move forward as best as we can. But um in answer to your questions, um, for those who know, I was uh, I was um, uh, charged with um, with uh, fraud and breach of trust uh, within the Senate back in uh, 2013. And uh, at that time, and uh, you know, I, I knew that these charges were false. I didn't know what was happening. I don't know. I didn't know why it was happening to me. Uh, I, I just didn't understand. But what I wanted to do was it was get out there and, you know, say my side of the story because I just couldn't believe what was happening to me because, you know, I may be many things and people may say many things about me, whether good or bad, but, you know, one thing that I don't do is I, I don't lie. And, you know, when, when these charges were brought up, I, it just hit me like a, like a ton of bricks and like a Mack truck had hit me. Like, what is going on here? Like, a, like my reality had completely I uh, just uh, went, uh, you know, just went into spiral. And so, uh, as you know, when we go through the court system, the first thing that lawyers say is not to say anything to either the press or to anybody to not jeopardize the case. And, um, you know, I had a lot of uh, lack of patience uh, several years ago. Uh, and so, um, you know, I made some bad decisions and, you know, because my self-esteem quickly went down and I, I hit the bottle, uh, you know, pretty solid. Um, and it was day in and day out uh, for almost a three-year period. And so, um, you know, I, I really uh, saw the, the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. Um, and I, I tried to, uh, at one point, I tried to commit suicide. I was just, you know, for myself, uh, not to be a victim here, but I, I just felt so much pain and rage and anger that, you know, I felt injustice. Um, and I had to live for almost three years with false charges. And then all of a sudden, uh, the Crown uh, decided to, to withdraw those charges. And so, uh, but I had to go through that process. It was a, a difficult process. It was a hurtful one. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I think I came out stronger and uh, I gained a lot more knowledge of what is actually happening, you know, in, in my circle of, of uh, you know, working in the Senate and politics. 
and listening to different voices and you know rather than saying uh, you know this is the way we should do things or here here's my here's my solution well i've been listening to what more people have said and i'm trying to gain that experience because i do have a lot of years in front of me uh, but having said that um, you know it's an ongoing battle i mean every day i wake up um, you know i think of that time period that i was and uh, you know even though sometimes i do think about having having a drink because i'm i'm i've been completely sober for more than a year now um, uh, but it's tough. I, you know, I, I think about it, but then I go back and think about when I was in that dark place and I just never want to go back there. And so, you know, I just decided to do a lot of research, um, uh, at work and, uh, what I, you know, and to, uh, to work on issues of mental health, suicide prevention. And all I'm trying to do is give back as much as I can, because I'm in a position where I, I can do that now. And, you know, politics is, uh, Politics will be politics, but uh, being in the Senate, I'm an independent senator, and uh, you know I try to have an open mind and open open ear to uh, what others have to say uh, as well. Right, right. So, um, do do you feel that you carry any bitterness uh, during that period of time towards uh, any of those people that may have uh, perpetuated some of this? Uh, do you carry any bitterness against maybe society, uh, any anything like that? Because I know uh, when I've gone through times, I, I definitely I, I get that feeling like like really like of um, myself against the world, you know. And, and I really, uh, that's kind of my, that's my challenge is to really get out of that mindset because it's really easy for me to go there. Um, so do, do you have, do you have any similar sort of, uh, sort of, uh, I guess, experiences from any of that time? Do you carry any bitter, any bitterness? Do you remember anything bitter from back in those days? Well, I, I, I was very bitter for, for that three year period where, where I was, uh, you know, still in my opinion, and, uh, obviously, uh, unduly suspended and uh, I was suspended without pay and for no reason. Uh, and still today, there's no answers with respect to uh, why that was, but, you know, I, you know, I, I could have, I, I could have went back and, and tried to sue the Senate and sue the RCMP, but, you know, I had been uh, embroiled in the legal system for so long and fighting and spending money and, and you know, a lot of money to the lawyers and, um, but having said that, uh, you know, at one point I just decided that, you know, that took too much time and energy and it was draining me and it, it was leading me down that dark path. And so, you know, uh, to make a long story short uh, about uh, when the pandemic hit about a year ago, I had tried to organize this, this national indigenous day of, of, of prayer uh, and smudging. And, um, you know, ever since that day, it was uh, March of last year, ever since that day, every day I've been smudging and uh, spiritually, some things have been happening to me and um, all to say that uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm becoming a, a, a better person and, uh, you know, it's not about uh, me, me, me anymore. It, there, there's other people and, uh, you know, I have two young children at home. Uh, you know, I have quite, well, I have a, a few kids, but I have two young ones at home now. Uh, and so uh, I'm concentrating on them, but, um, you know, every day I go to work, uh, I see a lot of people who voted to suspend me, uh, people of my former uh, party. And uh, so it, it's tough, uh, you know, you, you stare people right in the eyes and, you know, why did you do this? And I know why they did that is because uh, they were whipped to, to, to vote in, in that matter for the party. But, uh, you know, it, it had a lot of repercussions on the individual and, uh, the individual's family and you know my entire family and dad and brothers and so it wasn't easy for 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 none of us but uh, we all got through it and um, but uh, you know the bitterness um, I guess I was uh, lucky enough to be able to let it go and uh, you know it, it's consuming a lot less of my time and I'm focusing more on on what's important. Right, right. So for me, I guess uh, very similar, I guess, thinking back, though, uh, I guess I, I kind of always figured that I kind of always sort of had this chip on my shoulder uh, once I got older and I started to kind of think about myself and analyze things, realized that ever since I was, I was young, I always kind of had this little bit of a chip on my shoulder uh, and it would come out in sports and competitions and, um, uh, you know, I didn't like to lose 
And I, I and you know now that I'm uh, that that I'm getting older and I have experience now coaching uh, indigenous athletes, uh, I really have that extra engagement in doing that because I can recognize that because every once in a while you'll see uh, the most talented indigenous kids from somewhere in the bush up north in Manitoba. And they, they're so talented. And then, you know, maybe they get scored on and they like slam their stick against the boards and swear and get so down, you know, and it's like at those moments that I really connect and I understand it's like because I can understand what they feel like. Um, so I do feel that there's uh, a way for me to try and use those experiences a a and to help give back to the youth. Do you have uh, any sort of similar experiences? Of course, you're, you're, you, you have uh, uh, children of your own, uh, but yourself. But what, what, do you have any sort of perspectives like that in sense of giving back to the youth or, or, or knowledge transfer to the next generation? Well, uh, interesting enough, my um, my uh, my spouse um, uh, just received a doctorate in uh, in education, but she has a master's in uh, psychology. And but her doctorate was about how we socialize uh, young boys uh, versus young girls uh, at a very young age. And so, uh, as you're very well aware, as young boys and especially our generation, you know, when we're young, we're you know taught to be tough and not to cry, to suck it up and walk it off. And, but I think that, uh, you know, with, with respect to the experiences that I went through in the dark uh, periods that I went through, uh, that really hit home because um, I found out that, you know, it's okay to seek for help and it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to cry and it's okay to feel uh, different emotions. And, and uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, that may have played a, a role in, you know, how I turned to the bottle and I was very, um, you know, I was very by myself and angry and bitter. Uh, and, you know, uh, you know, when I I'd sober up, uh, then I'd feel guilt because I'd, I'd want to drink again. And so it was a very uh, vicious pattern. But, uh, it, you know, it was for me, it was all about not being able to express my emotions and just keeping everything inside. And, you know, once I got angry, uh, then things would explode, and uh, you know that's that's just uh, that's just not right. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, with respect to youth, I think you know it's it, it's it's okay to to win, it's okay to lose, it's okay yeah. to try, it's okay to have a bad day. Uh, but the, the key is is like life is to keep on going because hopefully tomorrow there's another day. Yes, yes, for sure. And I, 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 that just totally made me think of, a, of a, an NHL player. He used to be a fighter and he's got some concussion issues. I can't think of his name right off the top of my head, but I, I remember watching him. Uh, he spoke one day and he said when he was a kid, he thought that the NHL was only for white people because he, he didn't think that that was even possible. It was just like this fantasy land that was on TV. It was Hollywood. It was a movie. It was, it was nothing that that really existed. And uh, when he got older, uh, you know, to be able to to see that, to have that opportunity. And for me, that was kind of the, the same thing a little bit, I guess, uh, uh, with wrestling. Uh, I grew up around Stampede Wrestling and then uh, WWF became really big. And um, to me, that was just uh, the largest thing. Right? It, it was literally, they had a cartoon uh, that came on uh, on Saturday, that Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. So I really, really had that from early on in my life, because you see a lot of these guys were larger than life. And of course the Hulk Hogan, uh, you know, to train hard, say your prayers and the each vitamins and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, it was just also larger than life. And it was something that really, really inspired me and, and engaged me ever since, uh, since I was a youth and carried through to my uh, adulthood. Do you have anything like that in your life that used to inspire you uh, when you were a kid that you kind of followed through with? Well, um, well, when I was young, I, I used to play uh, uh, hockey, uh, and but uh, uh, it was the first time that I, I went to, I was brought to a game uh, to go watch the, uh, the Montreal Canadiens at the, the old Montreal Forum where, uh, where, the, where the Stanley Cups were won. And it was just to, to, to go and see all the bleachers and uh, see the people that you, uh, you know, you used to watch every Saturday night on, on TV. Yeah, uh, but you're there. I was there as a young kid uh, watching it live, and 
you know, it just made me want to become a better hockey player. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that, that didn't happen. But, you know, I kept having the dream for as long as I could. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I think everybody in Canada pretty much has that same story. I grew up in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan and started playing hockey at, uh, at five years old. And uh, it was just a, it was a way of life. And, um, you know, a, you, when you're younger like that, you assume that it's going to be part of your life until, you know, all the way, we're all going to go to the pros. That's what everybody thought when we were six, seven, eight years old. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely lived uh, that, that hockey. It's a great way to grow up in, in Canada. There's a lot that you can learn in sports, especially in the city, you know, being an indigenous person in a city, it, it's a great way to, to learn to come out of your shell and to, to talk to others and work together as a team team uh and 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 all that kind of stuff so i i, I was always really uh into the team sports and, and 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 into learning as much as you can from sports uh also into culture a little bit uh somewhere around uh my 20s uh when i was going to the saskatchewan indian federated college uh, i started getting uh this interest in going back to the powwow i wanted to i was hearing powwow songs and at the time i was playing football for the rams and uh, you know so i wasn't really all wasn't going to a lot of powwows because I was playing football and lifting weights and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, but really for me, it was the the powwow singing and the drum that that kind of brought me back to the culture. It kind of brought me back to the circle. Uh, do you have anything like that or any interest that kind of brought you back towards your circle? Or, or do you ever feel, have you ever been feel, felt that you've ever been uh, even disconnected at all? Well, I, I, I was disconnected for, for uh, quite a number of years because when I was young, uh, you know, uh, because of different, uh, different issues, I wasn't allowed to go. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I wasn't a recognized status Indian uh, when, I went, when I was a young kid. And so uh, I wasn't allowed to go to school. So obviously I didn't learn the language. Um, so it was only later on in life that, uh, you know, the, the matter in which I started looking into uh, you know, our, our ways and our traditions and cultures was to get involved with uh, an indigenous organization. Yeah. And so uh, I became involved with that organization and became the leader of that organization. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously I, I'm not, uh, I'm not somebody who, who goes to, uh, you know, I'm not always on the powwow trail, you know, mm -hmm. I go uh, once in a while, but, uh, and, you know, and I, I love the drumming, but uh, I think uh, what the you know what native drumming has done is it led me to want to learn uh, acoustic drumming, and right. so uh, I, I started that about uh, a year ago. And uh, I'm not uh, I'm not all that good, but it's just a hobby I developed because all these these years when I was uh, you know over drinking, uh, all my time was dedicated to drinking, and so all my oh. hobbies like like hockey and golf and you know playing uh, playing guitar. Yes. Uh, was put on the wayside and so uh you know once i i made the decision to sober up and to get clean and to uh you know to want to enjoy life uh i said uh you know uh i you know i just asked my my spouse uh, what do you think about me getting a drum set uh, you know because of all the noise in the house so so I was, oh, go ahead and so uh yeah i've been playing for a year so it's, it's a lot of fun Nice, nice. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally uh, can relate to that. Uh, when you're caught in that kind of a cycle during that negative uh, portion, uh, you realize the, the amount of time that you're spending that really takes away from a lot of the stuff. And, and you know, it's uh, uh, to take up something new, that's probably something that I wouldn't have been able to do, I think, um, during that period of, of, of my life but then once you get rid of that you realize wow I got I got more time than I did and I've, I've got more interests and I want to learn about more and, and I've got more money now you know it's just like so, so, so much stuff so much stuff and um yeah that that was just such an such an interesting uh point uh in my life was when i just decided that i was that i was going to really put my foot foot down and, and turn around um you mentioned a little bit as well about uh about your children um do you tell tell me a little bit about some of your life enjoying being a dad because i know for me uh one of the biggest things uh the the most uh probably my favorite role i think throughout my life so far had been a hockey dad uh, my kid is is my son cage is now 16 years old so he's older now it's not quite the same because he's almost you know driving himself to the games and practices but um you know I, I i really enjoyed that whole lifestyle of being at the rink every saturday and sunday um early in the morning 
and, uh, and, and following them around, taking for breakfast and all that kind of stuff. Do you have any uh, similar experiences uh, like that with your children? Yeah, well, you see, I have, well, I have six kids, uh, six kids in all, but uh, two, uh, two young ones living with me, one uh, five years old, and uh, my youngest son is two and a half. So uh, I, I take my, uh, each time I go uh, uh, take my drum lessons, I take my young daughter uh, who takes piano lessons. Yeah. So we, we do that together. And uh, over the course of uh, this winter, I tried to get uh, my son into hockey, bought him little you know, plastic hockey nets for outside with little yeah. hockey sticks, but uh, he's just not into it yet. So may maybe next year. So yeah. how old is he? Young, but, uh, you know, I do, uh, we, we do a lot of activities outside together. Got to stay in shape. Yeah. Yeah. How, how old are they again? Uh, well, the two youngest ones are uh, five and two and a half. Five and two and a half. So still young. So you, so you've got a, you've got a lot of years ahead of you. And if you know, five is still pretty young. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids don't start hockey till six, seven. Uh, so, but who knows? And, and, and if it's not, if it's not hockey, there's lots of other stuff going on as well. Right. Um, but I just, that that's kind of the life that I knew uh, from growing up in PA. There wasn't a lot back then compared, compared to what there is nowadays. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, and in addition to that, uh, you know, having, uh, having kids in the, uh, your mid forties is, is also considered a sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a testament to your health. You've obviously been, <laughs> been looking after yourself and, uh, uh, that's, that's good to see you're, uh, living, uh, living your best life, uh, enjoying being a father, uh, and, uh, enjoying being an independent, uh, Senator now. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I'll ask you a little bit, share a little bit about, uh, the, the political landscape here, uh, amongst the indigenous community. So, um, there is sort of this divide, I guess, and maybe I'll ask your opinion on it. Uh, there's a little bit of a divide uh, within um, the mindsets of, of participating in uh, elections of the governments, such as the federal government or the provincial or, muni or municipal governments uh, or not. And there's uh, seems to be a real divide. I know that in like as time goes on, it, the, the numbers are starting to, to even out a bit. Uh, but like, say, maybe 10 years ago, there was a really, really strong sentiment to, to not participate in the elections, uh, in the Canadian elections, uh, the provincial or the municipal. And there's still, um, there's still, there's still quite a bit of resistance. And the reason that, that I mention this is because it's very, it's, it's, it's personal to me. Uh, this, this is my background. You know, this is like the, the people, the mentors, the teachers that, that, that I listened to, um, growing up, you know, and the people that have shaped a lot of my opinions and, and, and have influenced me quite a bit. So there's this, this whole period now where, um, where, you know, I'm trying to see, uh, uh, you know, according to, uh, these new things, uh, maybe new new concepts that might be popping up in my brain, and and still kind of trying to to kind of be loyal to a lot of the um, a lot of the sentiment and the information that was shared uh, with me growing up. So I don't know if I'm telling or or make, saying that accurately, uh, but I'm I'm trying to trying to convey it that that you know I, when we grew up we we just we were told that we don't vote, we don't participate, we only vote for our chief and council, um, which of course is probably a little bit of uh, it backwards in and of itself, right? A little bit of hypocritical saying, you know, that we're not gonna participate in elections, but then we still do the electoral system for our own uh, chief and council. So anyways, a, a little bit about that. So uh, obviously you being a Senator, you may have a different opinion on that, but I'd, I'd like to uh, kind of hear your opinion and, and your advice, I guess, to, uh, to people that, that do vote and to people that don't vote, I guess, just in general. Sure. Well, look, uh, if you had asked me that question about 10 years ago, I would have said, uh, you know, uh, you got to get involved with the conservative party, vote, 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 support, and things will change. But, um, uh, I, I learned the hard way that uh, that that wasn't so. And so, having said that, I mean, the the decision to 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 participate and to cast a vote, whether in municipal, uh, band council, uh, provincial, or federal elections, is a personal choice. But having said that, um, you know, I, I'm currently working. You know, my office is currently working on a a research report that looks at that will look at all the promises made by both the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party at the federal level towards indigenous peoples and what they've actually implemented with those promises 
to as far back as we can go uh, since Confederation. Uh, and, and so I don't have the results of, of uh, the entire research that uh, my office have been conducted, but it should be out in, in a month or so. Uh, but my, my, my inkling about uh, what will come out is that it doesn't really matter uh, who the governing party is, uh, there's a lot of promises made, but not uh, a whole bunch of recommendations or uh, implementation of those recommendations. Uh, and so, you know, I think it's always important that, that, that First Nations people, Indigenous peoples do participate, because if you look at other minority groups, like, you know, the Asian community or the Jewish community or what the Italian community, uh, they're very implicated in political parties, regardless of, of who they are. Uh, and I think that as in, in indigenous peoples, I understand that people may not want to vote because maybe they feel as if they're, they're supporting the, the colonial governments. And, and I totally understand that. But I think that history has shown us that political parties don't change for indigenous peoples because we still have poor socioeconomic conditions. We, we know the whole gamut of issues. No, no need to, uh, to enumerate those. Uh, and so if political parties don't change necessarily or they slowly change to accommodate indigenous peoples, um, then I think it's up to indigenous peoples to uh, participate as much as they can to change the, the politicians regardless of, of political party. Um, and you know, because I, I was part of a part of the Conservative Party. Uh, you know, I was given, before I joined that party, I was given promises. I was told that th things were going to change. And, and, and I put my, all my eggs in one basket and uh, I decided to, to join at that time. But um, I quickly saw that a lot of the solutions that were being proposed, you know, some of the ideas that I had were completely shut out. And so I had non-Indigenous young kids in short pants uh, knowing more than than myself as an indigenous people and and other indigenous peoples across the country as well. So uh, I, I think that the, there'll be a reckoning or a time where as indigenous peoples, uh, the more we participate and implicate ourselves, regardless of the political uh, party, uh, that will have more of an impact on changing the culture and ways of thinking of other politicians that are non-indigenous. Right, right. You know, and it, at, at the very least, one thing that uh, that I can attest to or, the, or that I can relate to uh, is that you being an independent senator, that you don't really relate 100 percent to any of the teams. And and sorry, I, I don't mean to put it in like like it's a sport or whatever, but just to, <laughs> to put it back, because honestly, for me and, and I think a lot of other people, but I'll, I'll speak for myself personally, like this. I, I honestly don't feel that any of the parties really re represent me uh, completely. You know what I mean? And, and and the 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 downside to this whole pick a team thing is that you kind of go with all of their policies and all of their everything, the whole gamut uh, there within. And and there's none of them I feel that actually uh, fully align with. Um, you know, with, with, with my values and, and my opinions and, and those types of things. And now that I'm getting older, I, like I realize that that stuff should count, right? Like it's don't have to just sit by and, and not tell people uh, what I think, because but perhaps maybe that could be a residual effect of, of maybe residential school, right? Where sometimes we're taught maybe just put our heads down and, and things like that. Or maybe it's even from, from sports. Cause you need know, that, that whole sports culture uh, in football was, you know, you know, it's kind of like the military background, sort of like, you know, just keep your head down work hard be humble and so yeah. maybe maybe that's where that comes from but uh, but i'm really starting to pay attention because now uh, as time goes on it, the things have not gotten better things have not gotten better or, over the past like 20 years since i've been listening to all this and paying attention and uh, you know that means that things have to change things have to be done differently because they they say the definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and that's kind of where myself, that's kind of where I am. And I know that if that there's, if I'm thinking that, that there's going to be lots of other people that are probably thinking that too, but maybe are just too scared to say because they, they don't want to say, hey, well, you know, what, what's going on? Should, what, why don't we vote again? And what's the, what's the, why do we not participate and, 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 you know, there, there are a lot of good reasons. I'm still at the point where like, I, 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 I totally understand and I, and I respect 
anybody that that chooses um either way but still to, to me it's still on the individual um but but i do need a little bit of time and i would expect people to, to give me some time and to give people like me some time because a lot of us have been just list like i said been listening to this stuff uh and listening to to all of this um when we we're growing up and and uh not saying that there's that there's no merit to it because there certainly is um, but it, it just the fact that things have not changed enough, at, at the very least, they have not changed enough um, is enough to make me think, OK, some people, it's, maybe it's time to change the approach. And uh, that's kind of where I am. And, and I think that that's kind of where where uh, a lot of other people are. And uh, thank you for for sharing your your opinion on that and for not adding pressure because i know that sometimes when people talk about that stuff you know they're opinionated they you know can people can really pressure um but that that's uh, handled in a really good way and you presented that that information really well uh it, it, moving it's, forward it's per, at the end of the day it's a personal opinion but uh, you know uh, you know like i said i i think that as indigenous peoples uh whenever that time will be that we are going to have more of an impact uh, the more we participate, because the other way around hasn't worked for 150 years. No, no. And, and, and you know, there, there's also this thing. Uh, and my dad also experienced the same thing because I do work uh, in the public sector. Right. So I've been working for uh, the, the government for, for a number of years, uh, first off in the Public Service Commission and then most recently with the Crown Utility uh, SAS Power. Um, and my dad spent his career um, with uh, with Indian Affairs. Uh, is where he had retired. So, so we face a lot of the same uh, issues and a lot of the same criticism. Um, so I, I really look back and, and think about the experiences that he had, and, and I carry uh, those proudly with me today and do whatever I can to, to, to try and impact the world in a positive way. And I think that that's something that I wasn't really... I, I didn't think that I was capable of doing at, at one point. Uh, I thought I was just a, like just a football player or just a wrestler and all I do is lift weights. And that's my, that's my contribution. But, you know, now that I'm getting older and getting closer to 50 years old, right at 47, uh, starting, starting to think more uh, about um, how I can contribute and, and, and how I can impact things. Uh, so, it, so it's good to, to check with other people that I respect with to, to see what their, what their opinions are like. I appreciate well, if that. There's anything, if there's anything I can do to help you, you just let me know. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So I'd like to segue uh, into something uh, that was also of more uh, interest, I guess, because so, we went through the, the adult stuff. And I want to talk about something a little bit that caught my interest as well. And uh, that was, of course, there was a boxing match. And, and the reason why I brought it up, I'm, I'm only bringing it up because I saw uh, a social media post that you had made of uh, the boxing gear that you had wore uh, in a famous boxing match a, a number of years back. And uh, I wanted to know, is that, are you starting to think of potentially putting the gear back on, putting the gloves and boots back on, and potentially stepping back into the squared circle? Well, I've been waiting for nine years uh, because, you know, our, our post-interview, uh, our, our post-match interview uh, nine years ago, I, I immediately asked for a rematch and uh, you know, Justin Trudeau uh, immediately responded by saying there's not going to be a rematch. But uh, having said that, like I said, uh, you know, I'm going to be 47 and, uh, you know, I've been uh, getting in some pretty good shape and I'm uh, probably in uh, better. Oh, well, I, I'm definitely in better shape than I was nine years ago. And so, uh, yeah, I've been working out uh, j just for fun. But, uh, hey, you know, like... Uh, you know, my, my, one day my son uh, will ask me uh, why I lost to Justin Trudeau. So I'll tell him the truth and I'll tell him the truth that I underestimated him. And, you know, I took this as a street fight and, uh, you know, I was out of gas after two minutes. And so um, uh, so I'll, I'll be honest and I have uh, no uh, no shame in telling him, but he'll also ask me why there was no rematch. And so, you know, I had to put something down officially on paper, which there hasn't been no response yet. And so... Um, that, that, you know, no response will be a response. And so right, if he right. says yes, uh, I would do it uh, tomorrow. But uh, if it doesn't happen, well, it sucks to be me because I had my chance and I blew it. <laughs> well, there you have it. It sounds that we have the challenge has been made once again for the rematch. 
And uh, just so you know, I don't mean to twist your arm at all or, or, or try to influence your decision at all, but uh, you know, you do have myself and you have uh, the Hannibal, Devin Nicholson uh, that have a wealth of experience uh, in between the ropes and a number of years uh, of training. Definitely be willing to, uh, to work with you to get you in shape and get you ready for that boxing match and maybe be in your corner if need be. But like I said, I hate to try and twist your arm and encourage you to do things, but but if that's what you're looking to do, by God, you've got two people right here in the wrestling business that would definitely support you. Well, uh, thank you for that. And it, it's not to say that uh, we were by by any by any means good fighters or good boxers, but uh, you know uh, most boxers uh, you know are entitled to a rematch. And right, so, right. Uh, and there was a lot of interest in that as well. Uh, and, and, you know, when you think of it, there, there could probably potential be there to, you know, raise money for, for a good charity or, or something like that. I'm sure uh, you guys could put your, put your minds together and come up with a good cause. And, you know, I think that the people are ready to see it. And, and if this was wrestling, if this was pro wrestling, the old Patrick Brazo might have been what's called the heel which is maybe would have been known as, as the bad guy. And I think nowadays, if the Patrick Brazo was to come out the entrance way that you'd be what's called the baby face, that's the good guy. And uh, I just wanted to say that I, I do believe that. I do believe that I've paid attention to, to you, of course, uh, not knowing uh, you other than just, just watching and paying attention. Uh, and then after uh, actually getting to, to meet you and, and then speak with you uh, through, through, through Devin and talk a little bit about pro wrestling, talk a little bit about careers and, and life in general. So I just wanted to say that I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to, to get together with me, not once, but twice because yesterday was it was a failure uh, in terms of uh, our, our technical connection but thank you so much uh for for joining me here today and uh if the, i'll turn the last word uh, over to you if there's anything that you wanted to say to everybody out there that's uh that's watching this well to the first nation sensation i'm uh, i'm glad we did this it was a pleasure talking to you uh, it was a pleasure the first time that we had the we had an off the record chat and yep. uh to all your viewers, uh, you know, I, I, I look at this guy on Facebook. I look at your postings. Uh, I know you're, you're busy and I, I didn't know you went through a rough period, but I'm glad that, uh, like you said, you put your foot down and you know, you're trying to get things straight. If you ever need any help, I'm here for that. Thank you very much, my friend. And with that, thank you to everybody for joining us here tonight. Once again, that was another great show of the Wable Star Show. However, in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another edition of the Wable Star Show. Bye-bye now. Miigwech. Miigwech.